हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर हीरल सोलंकी फ्रॉम अहमदाबाद फिजियोथेरापी कॉलेज द असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन पी यू वेबिनार ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ पारूल यूनिवर्सिटी एंड फैकल्टी ऑफ फिजियोथेरापी लेट स्टार्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ टूडेज एमिनेंट स्पीकर डॉक्टर रामालिंगम थंगमनी सर he is having very rich 20 years of experience in the field of physiotherapy for clinical as well as academics sir has completed his bachelor of physiotherapy from dr mgr medical university in 1997 sir has also completed master of psychology in 2002 sir has completed his post graduate diploma in research methodology in 2015 from vnsu recent at sarvajanik physiotherapy college surat previously sir has also served at the krupanidhi college of physiotherapy bangalore he has also served at krishna murthy clinic tamil nadu search sir has translated more than 250 plus cochrane studies Sir has also translated the Pedro homepage in Tamil. Sir is having more than thirty plus national and international publication in the journals. Sir has given training on Excel, SPSS, and many psychology topic. He has achieved a distinguished service award from Indian Association of Physiotherapy in March two thousand eighteen. Sir is having the vast experience of reach more than twenty years in treating rehabilitation and geriatric patient. So, as it is said that fixing the pain, taking the names, and making the gain. Abhi na on the topic of physiotherapy practice. in chronic musculoskeletal pain condition by dr ramalingam thangamani sir we are truly to begin today's session <clears throat> thank you thank you very much for your nice introduction uh, <clears throat> can i share my powerpoint now yes sir so uh, straight away we'll go into the subject okay <clears throat> is it fine yes sir, it is visible yeah yeah visible okay uh good afternoon to everyone uh, who is uh, uh, willing to listen this particular uh, uh, seminar or webinar on this chronic pain management uh, uh, this one <clears throat> i'm really excited to share something with you uh, moreover i think i hope i may learn some new things from this particular interaction with you all from parul university amadabad college of physiotherapy okay uh, let me straight away go into the subject today's topic is that what is the uh, present the scenario of uh, physiotherapy practice in chronic musculoskeletal pain management okay so everything is changes uh, in life uh, the same thing happens to pain and its uh, management as well okay uh this particular uh, lines are from a famous poet from uh, tamil nadu of first century regarding uh, how to treat a patient okay you no need to worry about the first line which is in tamil but uh, uh, down you have that same lines in english okay first we have to diagnose the disease cure in the present days okay current practice moreover we are all very much interested about the cure as soon as we come to know the problems but there is a, a big thing which is lying in between the disease and the cure that is the root cause so when we are not aware of the root causes of any problem for example here the problem is pain 
okay we have the cure in terms of physiotherapy modalities management exercise therapy electrotherapy like that okay how we are going to connect that pain to these uh, modalities and treatments uh, without the root cause knowing the root cause of the pain it's always very difficult to select the modalities or the interventions which we are uh, applying straight away so sometimes now or most of the times it may be a failure that we would not able to satisfy the uh, pain of your patient okay today's objectives of uh, objectives are only three okay i will not bore you students no need to worry about that i will take uh, hardly 40 minutes only to complete just i'm going to give you some uh, nice understandings regarding pain and uh, biopsychosocial model and what we are practicing how we are supposed to practice in future okay so chronic pain management is like uh, on the right side you can see the picture it is like walking on fire okay when you have to walk on fire you have to be fast and as well as smart uh, then only you can escape and you can uh, be uh, ending with some less burns on your feet it is like that it is the position this is the same current uh, position of the therapist who over is treating a chronic pain because most of the patients over we are treating we could not able to satisfy them we could not able to eliminate the pain from them so where is the problem this is what is the core uh, uh, thing which uh, we are going to discuss today okay first objective chronic pain okay more than 50 million adults have chronic pain daily or almost uh, uh, daily okay this is the Uh, cdc report okay so from that you can understand that uh, as we are the one of the main stakeholders of pain and uh, pain assessment and management okay uh, there is a huge uh, opportunity or chance uh, to practice and deliver our stuff and get the name and fame in the society as well as uh, financial gains also so we have a very good uh, scope as well as hope in practicing chronic pain management because the prevalence is so high okay uh, next uh, what is chronic pain okay the main issue in chronic pain is that normally uh, whenever you have some stimulus okay any sensory stimulus they produce that particular response for example if i touch you you will feel only touch okay if i apply a cold you will get only the cold sensation if it are any hot fluid is Uh, touched uh, on your skin you will be getting the heat uh, feeling the heat like that but here what happens this stimuli okay as well as the the last stimuli but not the least stimuli the nociceptive stimuli the stimulus which is which is responsible for pain okay that also you have a threshold normal physiology must have understood about threshold so if we need a, some kind of basic uh, uh, enf uh, intensity to produce a particular response okay so the nociceptive is stimulus okay even though with less threshold you get pain that is called hyperalgesia what is hyperalgesia increased uh, ability are heightened okay are excited the role of the nervous system even though you have a mild stimulus of nociceptive stimulus that is being felt as a very big pain that is hyperalgesia that second one is that whatever the other uh, stimuli are there like light touch cold heat everything they are also capable of producing pain okay that is called allodynia okay this hyperalgesia and allodynia these are the main uh, features of chronic pain so the uh, uh, stimulus which is responsible for production of pain even with less intensity it produces more pain that is issue number 1 issue number 2 is that even the other stimuli which are not capable of producing pain also they are producing pain so these are the two issues are lying with the chronic pain so it is a kind of sensory perceptual issue with the individual so in that way the chronic pain is always uh, different from the acute pain the acute pain you will be getting some tissue injury followed by some kind of uh, chemical changes or something like that you must have studied everything inflammation etc etc that is why you have the pain that is acute pain but in chronic pain what happens only after the acute pain uh, the scenario is over that inflammation everything still the pain persists why the pain persists only two reasons either due to hyperalgesia or due to uh, allodynia okay so the left side picture you can see that uh, 
the pink color is normal okay the blue color uh, graph is normal so everyone should get pain at that uh, blue color graph but uh, the chronic pain patients uh, uh, curve will be just somewhat before okay that is uh, kept in the red line you can see that okay right and you can see that the minimum intensity needed also a little bit less so with the less intensity only you get more pain okay that is called hyperalgesia then unnecessary stimulus also they produce pain that is called allodynia this is what is represented here okay this is a normal phenomenon this is one abnormal phenomenon with the chronic pain patients okay uh, why it happens uh, what are the causes behind this chronic pain even though the acute pain scenario is over why the pain continues okay okay even though there is no physiological changes in the body or pathological thing the pain persists what are the reasons the complementary factors are uh, bio psycho and social in nature when they contribute these factors when they complement the pain chronic pain when the risk increases when the time is running okay for example if at all a patient gets a pain if it is getting all right within 15 days 2 months like that no problem after 3 months a cut off point the pain persists that is called the chronic pain okay the reason definition is that any pain which is continuously present with a person for more than 3 months it's called a chronic pain okay in the old books it must have been written as 6 months nowadays it has been changed to 3 months okay the reason sir it's not purely biomedical it is psychosocial as well so those factors also they are contributing more to the uh, this one okay we are all worried about the red flags uh, in pain management okay uh, what are the contraindications uh, complications consequences like that here the chronic pain the contributors are yellow orange blue and black uh, uh, flags are there okay uh, emotional issues cognitive issues and uh, lifestyle issues environmental issues like that there are many issues are also supporting the pain okay this biopsycho social concept only is known as biopsycho social approach that we will discuss in the next class okay uh, whenever there is a chronic pain the chronic pain is contributed by the bodily changes physiological as well as physical then it has got some kind of cognitive component mind emotional component lifestyle component environmental components spirit that is the patient's uh, spirituality related uh, uh, what do you call uh, opinions uh, everything and uh, the society also plays a major role in uh, uh, controlling or uh, uh, modulating the chronic pain so all together we can just say that if at all you see a chronic pain patient you can say that uh, bless me okay so everyone wants a blessing okay bless me you can remember these are all the concepts behind the uh, chronic pain this one okay uh, to under make you understand uh, graphically this picture is there okay in the x axis you can see that months are there in the y axis you have the pain and the intensity everything you can see that after 3 months the pain becomes somewhat uh, not purely biomedical okay muscle tension postural habits behavioral habits these are all the normal things which we discuss with the patients whenever we treat pain okay uh, sit properly don't do this do this like that but what happens after uh, some time uh, more than 3 months or 6 months gradually the stress anxiety depression disability social factors they all start contributing to the pain okay okay the, this is the main issue behind the uh, chronic pain factors but uh, do we have any pure uh, assessment format for the uh, other factors uh, as such you know uh, we don't practice that much do we have really uh, related um, uh, what do you call treatment modalities or interventions to manage that uh, that also as a therapist no we do very less at present times in the current practice okay uh, to conclude the chronic pain an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with are resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage okay the reference is there down uh, what i mean to say with this particular latest definition uh, 2020 okay uh, you have to understand that there may be pain without any tissue injury even after uh, the tissue injury everything healing occurs the pain may persist 
okay it may be due to sensory emotional experience etc etc it is not necessary that that you should have a potential damage to have a chronic pain chronic pain reasons are not a tissue damage okay tissue damage is only related to acute pain chronic pain uh, may or may not be with tissue damage that is what we have to understand okay uh, the second object of the today's lecture is biopsychosocial approach so as the factors are biological psychological or social uh, to treat that chronic pain we should not use the purely biomedical approach what is the biomedical approach for example if a patient comes with a back pain you give a diathermy or something like that and you prescribe few exercises and you give some ergonomic advices all these things are purely biological in nature biomedical in nature so you are going to uh, manage the condition based on the uh, physiology pathology etiology like that okay but uh, we have to consider the other two uh, aspects factors uh, about this particular chronic pain those are called as psychosocial so when we use a biopsychosocial approach that approach may be more apt one for the current practice than a pure biomedical model this is what the real need of the our we have to transform our practice from reductionist approach to a transformative approach comprehensive approach okay just i will give you a brief explanation only about biopsychosocial model okay this was by, by george angel okay uh, we all know that you can see the right side three circles any health physical health or mental health no they are all contributed by the three uh, rings biological psychological social that all we know it's it's a common thing we accept we call it as a holistic thing okay right so anyone is uh, uh well being depending upon these three factors we all know that gender disability stress biological thing behavior personality attitude learning memory education social support all these things we understand if someone should be uh, na what do you call perfect with his or her mental health or physical health we apply this model we accept but when it comes to pain we don't accept this model we are all more relying on only the left side circle the biological factors this is severity inflammation etc etc we are all looking the body only all the time the structure and function of the body only but we forget the function of that psychological factors and social factors like cognition and the fear of the patient stress level of the patient the coping uh, capacity of the patient okay and the culture or the custom around which they live what kind of environment they are living what is their economical status okay what kind of social support relationships interactions are there all these things are also contributing this particular pain this is what is the main uh, yeah, what do you call it? core aspect of this particular theory so a pain the way well being is contributed by bio psycho social factors definitely a problem which comes to the person the same human being called pain also will be having bio psycho social factors behind then why we have to concentrate only on the biological factors why we have to give more weightage for that why we are not giving any weightage to the psycho social factors this uh, inequality or uh, approach uh, disparity that leads to uh, failure in pain management okay <laughs> so the current physiotherapy practice is that it is like this reductionist rationalist okay so you are going to be a reductionist uh, this is the problem this is my modality i know you give that and you wait for the pain to go or you are going to be a rationalist we are going to just find out interrogate and you are investigate uh, and you have to find out all the dimensions of the pain and you are going to give a holistic a comprehensive care to the patient so this transformation of reductionist to rationalist uh, rationalist is you no know, that is the important paradigm shift what is necessary in the practice of physiotherapy as far as chronic pain is concerned okay you must have heard about these kind of scales okay normally you no know, uh, which uh, we uh, don't use mostly with uh, pain and pain management patients normally we use that numerical pain rating scale visual analog scale megal pain questionnaire like that we want only the amount of pain we give you a treatment physiotherapy and we see it again whether improved or not the pain improved that much only these are the few scales from the name of the scales only you can simply understand that 
I have included the scales regarding the psychosocial factors like fear avoidance behavior, apprehension, okay, kinesiophobia, pain catastrophizing. That is uh, expecting pain. The pain may be very dangerous to me. It may be a disastrous thing to me. These kind of cognitive ideas or thoughts, no, that also contribute more to pain and distress like depression, okay, uh, kinesiophobia. Uh, if I move, I may get pain. So let me not to move like that. Fatigue, okay. Some patients will be having a fatigue problem. Then some people will be having a sleep issue, insomnia. Okay, some people will be having a compromised quality of life. Okay, because of that, all these kind of things also may contribute to pain. So each and everything can be measured uh, before your treatment and after your treatment. At the same time, your treatment should be targeting to reduce all these particular things. Okay. So, if these psychosocial factors are also concentrated, definitely you can produce some kind of good pain management. Okay. Uh, what are the scales are used there? Written with abbreviation on the right side. Okay. These scales also may be used. Okay. Uh, some more scales also I have written here like PASS, FACS, Fear Avoidance Components Questionnaire, uh, thumb, uh, thumb Kinesiophobia Scale. Okay. Then FODA, perceived harmfulness of daily activities. It's a very good scale. People will be afraid of, if I do this, I may get my neck pain. If I do that, I may get my back pain. So years together, no, they don't do some activity. Okay. Uh, like uh, sitting on the floor uh, or uh, bending and uh, taking th uh, some things, riding cycle or riding bike like that. No, they have to avoid for years together. Okay, uh, that particular uh, perception itself will contribute to pain. So these kind of things and we try to modify that by our management uh, techniques, definitely uh, pain uh, level will be further less. Okay, what should be the current practice exactly? Education principle should change from reductionist to rationalist. Focus, control, movement. Straight away, don't go to the movement. Movement is the end. Okay. So we physiotherapists always concentrate on more of exercise, new, new exercise, new, new techniques, named techniques, uh, that manipulation, this particular X, Y techniques like that. Okay. But these kind of things may or may not work with the chronic pain individuals. So first you have to just make them focus. What is the focus? Focus is nothing but uh, what I mean to say is here is that cognition. Uh, what the patient thinks about his or her pain, why it comes, how it comes, what happens, this kind of education, you know, it's very important for the patient. As they don't know, they want us to fix the problem, we could not able to fix the problem. So chronic pain is not the one which cannot be, which can never be fixed by a physiotherapist alone. Okay, so we have to change the psychological factors of the patient, then control. What is control? Control is one important thing that that emotion, everything is related to emotion. So emotion related things are under control. Then you come to the physical part. So the ladder should be like this, starting from the cognition, emotion, then you come to the movement. In that way we go, that may be more, uh, what do you call, successful treatment than the regular biomedical approach of prescribing few list of exercises, strengthening program like that. The next management principle is that compliance to adherence. Normally, we expect compliance from the patients. Okay, I am going to give you, prescribe you some exercises, which some exercise will be teach you at home, which you have to do every day, eight repetitions or 10 repetitions in two times, weekly three days, this much time. So we are into that dosage prescription. So we expect our patients to be uh, compliance to that particular treatment. If they don't do, then we say that because of that only you are not, your pain is not coming down, this, that, like that. Whether really it works, if you uh, think, uh, if you consider as far as the chronic pain is concerned, it is not so. The evidence is uh, saying it is not that pure compliance, 100% compliance alone will uh, produce the uh, pain relief. It is called adherence. What is adherence? It's somewhat different from that compliance. Okay, you cannot compel and get the things then uh, as far as the pain management is concerned. It is the adherence. The patient, they have to actively participate activity educate themselves actively involved in whatever they are doing so the here the main important thing is that the patient himself or herself should become the uh, main stakeholder of the pain management okay they have to take the responsibility they have to understand the responsibility they have to adhere to whatever they are doing 
whatever they are planning everything so it is their total involvement with full cognition uh, emotion as well as the phys- physical and physiological thing otherwise simply if they come as a passive come uh, with a passive mode let me lie down you apply ift let me lie down you tell me some exercise like that this is not going to work so the compliance will not work but adherence may work okay their role is like that then whenever you give the dosage of uh, the things which i am going to tell you in the next slides no everything you have to do it in the principles of emi emi means equated monthly installments okay gradually only when you take a loan or something no uh, you initially pay a little more uh, interest and a less principal then gradually as the months and years are going no your uh, interest will be less your uh, principal will be more like that you will be repaying the same way whenever you start a program uh, you make it as a realistic program do it in uh, small quantities give them uh, many breaks gradually ask them to step up and get the things done no need to push with their uh, very strict dosage okay this many repetition this much time you have to do like that then what happens the chronic pain and all they uh, instead of uh, getting uh, down no they little bit uh, uh, getting worse and okay they get worse because of the hyperalgesia or allodynia uh, issue okay what will happen your stimulus what you are giving the exercise also capable of producing more pain okay your electrotherapy also capable of producing more pain why the threshold level is very less for this kind of people so even the other uh, nociceptive non nociceptive stimuli as well as nociceptive stimulus both no they are at the low level they are getting uh, excited so easily the patient will get pain so vigorous exercises very strong and uh, powerful exercises and all may be a, a problem for the chronic pain patients so the dosage should be gradually progressing okay then exercise and cognition is very important so whatever the exercise is prescribed the patient should not do it passively they have to understand why they are doing what they are doing what part of the body is working which muscle works uh, not the name and what is the purpose why i have to do this kind of education is always good to uh, get the success of the exercise program or physiotherapy so regular education cognition regarding the therapy and the explanation okay making the patient understand all the things you no know, very important along with the exercise okay right and the perspectives that uh, next important thing is that okay uh, the blue color one is therapist the pink color is on patient the patient and therapist both they have to come together and they have to uh, and get it fixed themselves at a common point so you only don't talk you only don't decide otherwise patient only only Uh, decide not like that both you have to discuss the things and get the uh, things then uh, for with a mutual concern what is possible or not possible okay in that way you have to have the uh, practice so it is called a simply patient centered care so you are supposed to uh, start here patient centered care than a delivery care okay i am the therapist i know this i am going to prescribe you this this is not going to work with uh, chronic pain patients okay uh, to your kind uh, information and the latest uh, august 2020 nice guidelines okay from uk uh, it says that most of the treatments what we do at present times for chronic pain okay uh, they, they are not doing anything good than harm to the patient okay most of the therapies what we are doing now it should not be used this is what is the latest uh, evidence uh, regarding the chronic pain management okay then if at all we could not able to do the regular management what else we have to concentrate sir that will be the first question okay the tips for physiotherapy practice for current time is that neurophysiological education i am not going to give you full detail about all the interventions you have to acquire knowledge regarding this in future in your career okay neurophysiological education it is nothing but known as education about how pain uh occurs what is the reason how we travels what are the ways it can be or it cannot be like that so many of us even the professionals know we have some kind of wrong information regarding uh, how the pain impulses are being uh, uh, transduced from one place to another uh, this one how they are being perceived everything you know we have some kind of uh, lack of knowledge or you can say that some shortcomings with our knowledge so we have to have that knowledge 
as a therapist we also should be strong then we have to make our patients also should be strong about the uh, pain physiology education okay right that a bracket what i have written is that there is a questionnaire neuro physio pain education questionnaire npq you people can uh, attend the questionnaire and you can get the uh, score then you will come to know to what extent you know about uh, chronic pain and uh, uh, what do you call about chronic pain that you will come to know okay i guarantee that most of you people will be scoring only 30 to 40 marks only whatever you select no it may be the opposite uh, what really is there in that thing then motivational interviews okay these are uh, kind of uh, psychological dimension uh, techniques okay we have, we have to have interaction with the patient rapport we finish with that uh, in phys in physiotherapy you have to create a very good rapport with the patients here there is a structured way of approaching the patient how to take interview how to take a motivational interview okay how we have to be very close to the patient and get more of more of information and we can make them uh, assured about our treatments and everything okay it's a structured technique motivational interview is a technique which can be learned uh, through a certification or something then we can apply that in our interview sessions with the patient then the goal setting and pacing principle this is what i was already telling you emi principles so any exercise don't be very uh, don't make hard and fast rules okay whatever the capacity of the patient understand that and gradually progress for example you are teaching a shoulder bracing exercise to a patient the patient does only three times then again one more time two times so three plus two only the patient could able to do the patient is telling i could not able to do no need to worry as the patient gradually only you progress okay after three days Uh, from five repetition to six repetition like that don't prescribe that uh, 10 repetition into two times like that no need to prescribe okay as far as it is a uh, chronic pain okay the next one is that red color it is uh, typed because uh, you need the knowledge of uh, cognitive behavioral therapies so cognitive behavioral therapies we can uh, therapists can get uh, trained in cognitive behavioral therapies and we can apply to change the thought process because most of the pain you know they are due to the uh, uh, negative automatic thoughts okay many patients know they think that by doing this i will get this like that but there won't be any evidence this kind of there are many cognitive thoughts negative automatic thoughts are there there is a list and how to correct that thought like that and all there okay uh, those kind of trainings also we can uh, have, uh, get it done uh, through certification or something uh, we have to have some good uh, foothold in the uh, cognitive behavior modification principles and techniques that may be very useful for pain management chronic pain management then distress management okay uh, it's somewhat uh, somewhat related to depression or uh, mood changes like that you have to assess that phq 9 is the questionnaire nine items only will be there if you give it to anybody you will come to know what is the status of the distress level okay how the patient feels then how we can change the distress uh, by giving education or some other techniques and all that with that you can just reduce this may contribute to the pain relief then self efficacy and self management strategies very important because the chronic pain management 80% of the treatment lies with the patient's understanding and how they are going to follow our instructions uh, and our plans action plans it is not advices advices are different from action plans for example if the patient is not sleeping every day properly then we will give them uh, give the patient a sleep diary maintain the sleep diary that sleep diary will be maintained by the patient okay patient every day he will write this time i went to bed this time i got up so i slept this much time one hour was the deficit like that like this then gradually the patient will get the feedback from his own self diary management and he will or she will try to correct it so here who is uh, contributing more the patient but the therapist we are just a stimulus we will be just following it okay like that only but most of the things will be just done by the patient followed by the patient as a feedback uh, they will try to uh, change that particular attitude or something behavior this is very important with uh, uh, chronic pain management so the overall if you want to say the uh, care should be a holistic care uh, believing more of self management strategies and uh, patient centered uh, care than yeah, advice giving care like that it should change this is called uh, transformative care Uh, i have mentioned only few of the things only there are many things are there which uh, which are very much useful to change the psycho social factors of the uh, chronic pain okay uh, for example if you want to know little bit of things regarding cbt and all there is an application is there in play google you can just download a cbt companion 
ओके जस्ट यू एक्सप्लोर ऑन यूर ओन it is for uh, patients uh, and uh, any individual we don't call patient only in from the psychology side individual every individual can use in that all the tools are that phq this that whatever i was mentioning those tools also you can apply some techniques management techniques everything is there please explore this particular tool by downloading in your mobile you will enjoy it okay in that you have relaxation method breathing exercise for everything you will be having support it's a very good tool okay which you can use Uh, whether this particular thing works sir just now you are introducing is there any evidence this is the evidence that cognitive behavioral modification therapy or cognitive functional therapy is better than uh, any other uh, biomedical approach so a yeah, kind of what do you call uh, behavioral approaches uh, added to biomedical approaches are more uh, successful than uh, only biomedical approaches alone uh, when it comes to uh what do you call uh, chronic pain management that is what is the article okay by uh, peter rose lyvan okay he has done a very good work in this particular area many articles are there you just you can follow him uh, to know more about uh, what is chronic pain and what is con- cognitive functional therapy okay nothing in simply uh, to mention it in a simple way it is biopsychosocial that's it okay uh, this is Uh, the important thing which i was telling regarding the uh, neurophysiological education okay regarding what is chronic pain how the pain goes what are the wrong uh, ideas about pain okay uh, like uh, what do you call it? people will be having some uh, beliefs wrong beliefs regarding pain pain is i hota hai like that for that and all no you have the questionnaire and you have that education how to give the education you have videos booklets Uh, drawings many things are available according to the patient category uh, for your kind information even nowadays no children also they are suffering from chronic pain okay so you have to make them understand what is pain otherwise uh, wrong ideology about pain is the main reason for uh, perceiving more pain because pain is a perception it is a subjective phenomenon okay and <clears throat> then these are all the self uh, strategies in the bracket you can see that which is mostly used by the people okay the percentage you can see that okay uh, we use so many things self strategies like stretching exercise uh, just lying down hot pack or cold pack okay uh, like uh, going to bed i have a pain immediately i go to bed and uh, we do deep breathing like that so which are the important so whichever is in more in percentage that is what is practiced by people you can see that which is practiced more by people for Uh, pain to manage themselves okay every one of us have the same kind of thing some people sometimes we have a headache sometimes we have a neck pain back pain or something like that immediately we don't go to doctor or physiotherapist we do some kind of self uh, care strategies okay how what are the things normally done the percentage is give, being given here okay so apart from that if you think that uh, different specialized techniques are going to work on pain definitely we are fooling ourselves okay there is no evidence as such this evidence is from the practice okay what people normally use okay that proved that it is the observation or the survey from the people only who suffered from pain so most of the people you can see that 44% 0.7% uh, of people are using hot and cold applications okay very simple okay uh, no no one using uh, interferential therapy 90% it is not written x x y manipulation technique not written okay it is not that it is not practiced as such as a successful thing that is what you have to understand that so these are the varieties of self care strategies there okay then life man lifestyle management especially diet and sleep that we have to manage the last one not the least one obesity okay definitely it should be under consideration for managing the pain if at all your patients are uh, uh, having the problem with these three things uh, uh, try to get knowledge regarding all these thing and give advices don't give poor advice so one of the important thing uh, contributor for chronic pain is a uh, poor advice from the professionals so you have to first make yourself strong about what is sleep what is diet what is obesity that's very important okay have a good knowledge and then you give advice to the patients okay 
as spiritual no need to say that it is to make the confidence level and uh, to make the people assure that life will not be that much disastrous and it will not be upside down in a day or two it will not be upside down because of your pain everything has got a cure please wait like that this assurance so it's uh, it will make yourself very strong so definitely the patient may be very much enthusiastic to get involved in whatever the programs you prescribe or you try to make them involved that is possible so improving the self esteem is very important for the therapist for that also we may become a little more stronger in how to do that then environment definitely there are going to contribute so whatever in our control that we, the patient may try to control from their uh, what you call uh, side okay uh, regarding that okay whatever possible that they will be adapting uh, try to uh, get into their good environment to avoid uh, uh, pain or uh, uh, aggravating the pain or relieving the pain environment no factors they have got a very good role and uh, the next one is the social management it's, it's uh, mainly with relationships and uh, other things family support work issues so most of the pain chronic pain no they are all uh, positively supported uh, by the same as well as negatively supported by the same if you uh, interact with the patients no most of the patients beliefs are due to workplace uh, ideas uh, family suggestions uh, relation uh, friends uh, Uh, what your opinions like that only these kind of things no all these things no they either make the pain or uh, break the pain like that so definitely uh, these things are going to contribute to chronic pain so you have to uh, assess and understand what are the issues in the family work as well as in their relationship definitely that uh, anything we make some changes real changes that will work with the chronic pain okay so what is the theory supporting what whatever i have told to follow the bless me it is the chaos theory okay i am not going to explain the entire slide just you can see the right side corner car is there if the car is running every one of us we know that it is running because of the engine but at the same time we cannot deny the small small parts of the car that also they contribute running the car so uh engine may be the main thing but uh, if there is uh, no one wheel is there in the car car will not run like that uh, most of the factors whatever i mentioned here may be very small in nature but that small small corrections they may make the big thing the changes can happen this is called the chaos theory it is a mathematical theory okay in the in math in mathematics no even small uh, values no when you have many small values that makes a sense in mathematics like that small small changes around the patient's different dimensions of life will definitely change the pain perception that is what this theory uh, tries to say that this is the background for uh, biopsychosocial approach okay and uh, the recently i have concluded uh, everything uh, what is the practice Uh, going on what we are lacking what we are supposed to do in future like that one article i have published in uh, this one uh, academia letters just you can go through that it is a concise with only 1500 words only just you will understand what are the factors behind chronic pain what you, uh, kind of uh, trainings you have to take further to become a chronic pain management specialist uh, as a therapist and how to practice when you are uh, doing the interventions for your patient all these things no just th- three four pages uh, you can just uh, come to know okay all right uh, thank you thank you very much for your patience and listening i am waiting for your questions anything you want you can just ask back to dr hiran <laughs> yes thank you thank you sir for your uh, information informative session i thank you sir on behalf of parul university and faculty of physiotherapy for your insightful words and sharing your knowledge thank you sir